It's almost exactly a year since Royal Mail was privatised. Credit for the commercial turnaround that led to a successful sale was given to Moya Green, Royal Mail's Canadian chief executive since 2010 and the first woman and the first foreigner to head Britain's postal service in its five-century history. It's her job to modernise and energise a company whose activities range from Express Parcel Service Parcel Force, with its highly automated distribution hubs, to the delivery rounds of ordinary postmen and women who are the face of Royal Mail for many ordinary customers. Given the group's history of losses, regulatory constraints, poor industrial relations and government interference, privatisation was a real achievement. Automation should now allow Royal Mail to increase productivity further, but there are plenty of activities, including parcel handling here at the Mount Pleasant Distribution Centre, that are still done by hand. That's just one of the obstacles that Moyer Green faces in the coming years. Well, I think they've got to quickly improve automation and productivity in their parcel business and make that as competitive as they can you know, to offset uh, letter decline, which I think will continue at a, a steady and fairly sharp pace. I think another challenge they face is uh, revenues in the letter business over the past few years have been supported by price increases. Now, I think it's going to be very difficult to lift, lift prices, stamp prices, excuse me, uh, significantly again over the next few years. I'm concerned about the inflexibility of the cost base with the three-year pay deal that uh, management signed with unions in December. Uh, I also think in the parcel business they face stiff competitive headwinds and current trading is, is pretty weak. What this adds up to is strong pressure on Royal Mail to keep costs down and to justify any investment, including the new hub for Parcel Force at Chorley near Manchester, opened last year. Moyer had come to the company and had seen other parcel operators, not just in the UK but across the world, where uh, extra capacity had been built um, and they were struggling to fill that capacity and therefore obviously costs were, were rising. Um, and the prices then were dropped in order to, to generate the, the volume to fill that. And she made it very, very clear she didn't want that to happen in Parcel Force. And any, uh, um, um, any capital in Parcel Force would be hard won, so that we would continually have to prove that we were fit for, fit for that capital to be invested in us. Elsewhere, Royal Mail is facing competition in direct delivery in big cities such as Manchester, Liverpool and London, from the likes of TNT Post, recently renamed Whistle, which has put its own force of posties on the ground. It's, it's been a difficult journey uh, since around about November last year where TNT uh, started direct delivery uh, in, in the patch. It's been significant, you know, around about 10% of the mail, uh, of our mail bag has disappeared. Um, it, it's been replaced with other items, but in general, you know, we, we've lost a significant amount of traffic uh, to TNT direct delivery. Working out with our colleagues in the, in the CWU uh, and our delivery office managers and frontline colleagues to, to remain efficient and that's our drive at the moment, to remain efficient uh, while we're facing the competition. Alleged cherry-picking by rivals has prompted Moya Green to ask the regulator to intervene. She says unfair competition could threaten the economics of the universal service obligation, Royal Mail's duty to deliver to all parts of Britain at a fixed price. Obviously the Royal Mail is under obligation to operate the universal service. I mean, I see actually in some ways that's a benefit. Uh, they, from running this universal service, they maintain a large network. It allows them to uh, maintain brand recognition. But also there are threats, for example, from end-to-end -end services that may be offered by uh, the competition. Moya Green and the unions have forged a three-year pact that she argues will put an end to industrial relations problems that dogged her predecessors. In any case, she argues that strike action these days would immediately prompt customers to switch to rival companies. But Royal Mail's regulator and its new shareholders are likely to demand further improvements in productivity and efficiency. Achieving those improvements without sacrificing what customers value about Royal Mail and without provoking her staff is likely to prove Moya Green's greatest test yet. Andrew Hill, Financial Times, London.